Okay, in this video, we are gonna run through some examples of using the second fundamental theorem of calculus. And I'm kind of assuming you know what the fundamental theorem, the second fundamental theorem of calculus is, so I'm just gonna do the examples, but I'll be walking through it as I do them. So first example, we want the derivative with respect to x of the integral from five to x of cosine of two t dt. So you're gonna see dummy variables, which means the integrand is um, just kind of a random variable. Sometimes it's u, sometimes it's v, often it's just t. And then we're taking the derivative with respect to x. So one of the bounds of our function should be a function of x. And that's what we have here. So when we do this, first thing you do is you notice one of your bounds, the upper bound it should be, is a function of x. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace every variable we see in the integrand with that function. So we see a t there, that's the only variable in the integrand. I'm gonna replace it with that function. So it's cosine of two x. Now what I'm gonna do, by the chain rule, I'm gonna multiply by the derivative of that upper bounding function. So the derivative of x is one. And so my final answer to this is just the cosine of two x. So that's actually the entire thing. Um, the thing that really gets people is the chain rule on this. So let's take a look at another one. So it's almost the same thing. We want the derivative with respect to x of the integral from uh, zero to x squared of um, cosine of two t dt. So uh, I should have mentioned the first time, we, we really need the uh, lower bound to be a constant. So the lower bound is a constant. As soon as that's the case, we look at this uh, upper bound. It's a function of x. We're gonna replace every variable we see in the integrand. So again, t is the only variable there. We're gonna replace that with our new function of x, so that's x squared. So our first step is to write cosine of two x squared. Now we go back to the upper bounding function and we multiply, this is where the chain rule comes in, multiply by the derivative of that. So that's gonna be times two x and then kind of just rewrite it. And that's just how it works. So I'm gonna do uh, two more. So we want the derivative with respect to x, integral from negative one to e to the x cubed of cosine of two t dt. All right, so again, first check, make sure that lower bound is a constant. So it is, it's negative one. We look at the upper bound, it's e to the x cubed. We're gonna replace every variable we see in the integrand with that function. So there's our only variable. We're gonna replace it with e to the x cubed. So cosine of two e to the x cubed. And then we keep going. So we look back at that upper bound, multiply by the derivative of that. So the derivative of e to the x cubed is e to the x cubed times the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. And then I'm just gonna rewrite it. So three x squared e to the x cubed times cosine of two e to the x cubed. I'm gonna do one more example. So in this one, derivative with respect to x of the integral from x to four of cosine of two t dt. So that's a problem because that upper bound right now is a four and the upper bound is supposed to be the, um, the function. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use that property of definite integrals that I can swap the bounds and change the sign. So this is going to be rewritten as negative because I'm changing the sign derivative, and now it's gonna be from four to x. Okay, so that's an important first step. Anytime the lower bound is the function, you've gotta swap the bounds and change the sign. Uh, the integrand isn't gonna change here. And now I'm just gonna kinda of do the problem. So if I look at it now, that lower bound is a constant, that's good. So I look at the upper bound, it's x. I replace every variable that I see. So every t that I see in the integrand is gonna be replaced with x. So I get negative cosine of two x. Then by the chain rule, I go back to the upper bound. I need to multiply by the derivative of that, but the derivative of x is just one. So I'm gonna box this and be done. All right, so that's four different examples. Um, it's the same integrand, but I think that's important because you start to get a better sense of what's really happening here. Second fundamental theorem of calculus is, uh, I would say much easier to use than the first fundamental theorem of calculus because you don't have to find any antiderivatives when you do this. So it's super useful. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.